Our next speaker, number 53, Joanne Kippola Dennis. Uh, C-I-P-O-L-L-A hyphen Dennis, Joanne. Thank you, TCOG. I'm an American, that's why I'm here, but I'm fortunate to be a resident of Dryden. I'm well protected there. Mr. Livitz, all of New York is my backyard and I care for all of it. I started building my dream home 2007, literally with my blood, sweat, and tears, and many tears. We learned my neighbors signed leases, so I stopped building my home halfway through. We've been in limbo for three years. We won't be able to live in our new house. The social and financial damages are already being felt. There's nothing about that in the Geysis. Landowners haven't had the benefit of the knowing the consequences of their signature or the collateral damage to their neighbors. I'm now put in a position where I must sue my neighbor, not the industry. No one is telling the farmer, you can't farm methane and food. It's food or fuel. You can't have both. Sure, the farmer owns the property, pays the taxes, but is forced to become a gas whore for the duration of a never-ending contract, a never-ending lease. And their pimp, Philip Anschwitz, who is suing Dryden. He wants our backyard. Shale energy extraction makes homes uninhabitable. Even if the water stays good, people can't live there. Leases are forever. Friendship should be, but having a hand in ruining your neighbor doesn't make good conversation. There will be no do-overs. Farmers are being deceived in a sick and diabolical game the raping of innocent people's lands by grooming them like pedophiles groom their next victim, being set up for failure by terrorists and ties is disgusting, despicable, and immoral. Compulsory integration, the taking of my property by industry and my neighbor is unconscionable in America. It is just plain BP, beyond preposterous. It is a Ponzi scheme. Sorry. I'm just going to go right to the end. Sorry. New York residents have committed to a nonviolent pursuit of a national ban on fracking. New Yorkers have a history of starting things. The women's right movement, Seneca Falls, and the Declaration of Independence was signed here in New York by John Adams. New Yorkers lead, we don't follow. We are the people America is watching and waiting for. It is the governor of New York that must keep his promises to the people, and we expect him to announce a statewide ban any day now. New Yorkers are famous for many things kindness, attitude, grit, and spirit. Occasionally, we must use the F word. Thank you. <laughs> Industry, pick up your trash. That means Dennis Thank Holcomb, you. Ann Schwitz, Our and Jill. Our next Gil. speaker pick is number up. 54, Laura Kerrigan. Uh, L-A-U-R-A-K-E-R-R-I-G-A-N. Um, I'm a former employee of the New York State DEC at the Environmental Education Camp, Camp Rushford. I loved working with youth from all across New York State, teaching about environmental solutions all summer long. However, I wasn't allowed to speak about um, fracking with the kids. I have been frustrated with the DEC's inability to fully conserve the environment with its stance on fracking, as noted in the revised Esgeis. I am currently a student at Ithaca College but I am also a City of Ithaca employee at the water treatment plant. I'm speaking with urgency to protect, protect the civilians and the environment in New York State from the detrimental threat that hydraulic fracturing presents. I'm concerned for several reasons. As an employee at the water treatment plant, I know that our infrastructure is unable to treat the types of waste, such as biocides and radioactive waste, that have the potential to run off into our watershed, the Six Mile Creek. Let it be known that we are no more able to protect ourselves from this waste than Syracuse and New York City. With the rapid and vast increase in large truck traffic, 
the ground will become more susceptible to runoff and it would happen at a more rapid rate. The other issue that I am concerned with about the increased truck traffic is the potential of spills from the trucks themselves. The times that the City of Ithaca Water Treatment Plant has had to shut down their operations in the past have mainly been due to large truck spills. With the increase in truck traffic, these spills would become more frequent and the water treatment plant would have to shut down on a more frequent basis, putting an extreme strain on the surrounding municipalities, as well as increasing a chance of contamination of the finished tap water going out to the thousands that live and depend on the city of Ithaca water. I am also speaking with concern about the radioactive waste that would be produced from fracking. I know that the City of Ithaca wastewater treatment plant is not able or equipped to deal with that sort of waste. Where would you put it? I also know that the health effects associated with this radioactive waste have not fully been studied, and there is no right to put the people of New York State at risk with this waste. In other states, it has been proven to create neurological damage to humans who aren't even drinking the water, they're just using it to shower and wash dishes. I would like to think that New York State has been at the forefront of environmental action in the United States in the past and we have the opportunity to do so now. We need to stop hydrofracking and look to alternative energies for the future. It is the only way we will continue our lifestyles without being completely destructive of ourselves and the environment. Thank you. Thank you. May I propose, uh, maybe after you, a one minute uh, break. But please go ahead. Uh, number 55, Amy Perrier. Hi, um, my name is Amy Pereer. I live in Perry City, New York, in the town of Hector. I am opposed to fracking. The revised Esgeist does not have any mention of my three-year-old son, the air he breathes, and the water he drinks, bathes, and swims in. The revised Esgeist did not have any mention of the soil which grows our organic foods and our many neighbors who have farms and vineyards. The revised Esgeist does not have any mention of people like myself who already have health issues related to endocrine disruptors, which may become worse if fracking comes here. The revised Esgeist does not have any mention of why the New York City and Syracuse watersheds are more valuable than the rest of New York State's watersheds. The revised Esgeist does not have any mention of the peace and quiet which will be disturbed at our country home if fracking trucks pa pass by on a daily basis. The revised Esgeist does not have any mention of the recent acknowledgement that there is in fact a link between earthquakes and fracking. The revised Esgeist does not have any mention of what toxic chemicals are even in the hydrofracking fluid proposed to be injected into our beautiful fertile land. Why am I here tonight and not at home spending time with my family? This is absolutely ridiculous and should in no way happen. The idea of fracking is extremely offensive, selfish, and full of greed. The revised Esgeis has no mention of honoring our land, air, water, community, neighbors, children, peace of body, mind, and spirit. Please listen to our voices. We do not want hydrofracturing here in the Finger Lakes region or at all in New York State. We do not want it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a one minute break. So stand up, stretch, and then uh, I'm gonna call up speakers number 57 through 64. All right, the few, the strong, the proud. Um, so I've been informed that we have to stop right at 11 o'clock uh, per our agreement with the theater. Uh, so it, we're on track to probably get to speaker number uh, 70 or around there. Um, so our next speaker is number 56, Chris Applegate. Okay. Are you ready? Chris, C-H-R-I-S, Applegate, A-P-P-L-E-G-A-T-E. -E. And I'm from Virgil, New York. Um, as a rural landowner and organic grower, I've spent four years educating myself and others about the hazards of gas drilling. I am one of the 99% of citizens who choose not to sell out to, the, to this destructive industry, but instead choose to consider the impacts of drilling on my land, on my neighbors, and on my community. To be clear, we did not come here as supplicants to the great and powerful Oz. Like Dorothy, we have already done more than our fair share of heavy lifting at the whim of the DEC's process. 
We, the citizens of New York, came here to demand that the DEC follow its own mission to protect its citizens. The DEC Mineral Division's relentless and ill-considered championing of gas drilling in New York State is clearly at odds with the overall mission of the DEC, which is, quote, to conserve, improve, and protect New York's natural resources and environment, and to prevent, abate, and control water, land, and air pollution in order to enhance the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the state and their overall economic and social well-being. DEC's goal is to achieve this mission through the simultaneous pursuit of environmental quality, public health, economic prosperity, and social well-being, including environmental justice and the empowerment of individuals to participate in environmental decisions that affect their lives. In order to fill, fulfill its mission, the DEC must do the following things. Conduct a comprehensive analysis of the environmental impacts, health impacts, cumulative impacts, socioeconomic impacts and agricultural impacts of hydrofracking. Disseminate to every citizen a full disclosure of the hazards of gas drilling. Disseminate to all landowners guidelines for crafting an adequate and protective lease, if there is such a thing, similar to the 90-page lease that they crafted for the state forests. In doing so, the DEC would further its mission to protect all of the land of New York State instead of casting unsuspecting landowners to the mercies of an unregulated and fraudulent gas industry. Develop best practices, regulations based on a thorough analysis of the repercussions of gas drilling in other states, and extract the DEC from its part in uh, the unjust seizure of land through compulsory integration. Um, I'm going to skip the last two ones that I want to do. We see behind the curtain, oh great and powerful Oz, and there's a gas man standing there. If you are unable or unwilling to fulfill your mission, we demand a withdrawal of the SGICE and we call for a ban on gas drilling in New York State. We will never be silent and we will never stop watching. Thank you. Speaker number 57, Catherine Stevens. My name is Kat, K-A-T, Stevens, S-T-E-V-E-N-S. I'm from Cortland, New York, and I'm representing Occupy Cortland and Occupy Ithaca. Mic check. Mic check. check. We are the 99%. We, are the 99%. we will not sit by. We will not sit by. While large corporations. While large corporations. Team up with government officials. Team up with government officials to exploit our communities. To exploit our communities for monetary gain. For monetary gain. We will not tolerate. We will not tolerate drilling rigs tearing up our land. Drilling rigs tearing up our land. Robbing present and future generations. Robbing present and future generations of their health and economic well-being. Of their health and economic we will not tolerate. We will not tolerate the corporate takeover of our democracy. The corporate takeover of our democracy. We are seeing a global theme. We are seeing a global theme of profits over people. Of profits over people. The indifference of corporations. The indifference of corporations and political leaders. And political leaders who violate our rights. Who violate our rights and destroy our earth. And destroy our earth. Local economy. For a 
next speaker is number 58, John Gurch. Hi, I'm John Gurchy, and it's G-U-R-C-H-E. And I thought I would just offer uh, a personal perspective on, or a personal response to the s guys that's been put out. Um, two years ago, uh, I was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor. And um, I'm very lucky, I consider myself very lucky, because I had uh, a really good surgeon and I had radiation after that, and there's been no sign of the tumor returning. So I'm very uh, fortunate. Thank you. But um, what's my path forward? Well, what I'd like to do in my own life is clean up a little bit and um, eat better and avoid uh, carcinogens if I can. And um, it strikes me that, that what we're talking about tonight threatens my freedom to do that. And so what I find lacking in the s guys is any protection for a per person who wants to follow the path that I'm trying to follow. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. And I'd like to thank uh, everyone who has spoken for keeping to the three-minute rule. Um, I very much appreciate it, as do all the organizers. Uh, our next speaker is number 59, uh, Louis Damani. Hi. Uh, my name is Lou Damiani. L-O-U-I-S-D-A-M-I-A-N-I. -I. Um, my name is Lou, and I am an owner of Damiani Wine Cellars, a small winery on the east side of Seneca Lake. We and a number of other wineries are putting together a letter for Governor Como and the DEC to stand firmly opposed to hydrofracking in New York State, specifically the Finger Lakes, the wine industry in New York State represents a $3.76 billion industry that is sustainable and will be able to be handed to future generations. The wine industry in the Finger Lakes stands as the centerpiece to a $4 billion tourist industry in the Finger Lakes. Can there be any wonder about this? Many tourist publications are calling the Finger Lakes the number one lake tourist spot in the world. This pristine gem, the Finger Lakes, is being called the Napa of the East. These two industries cannot coexist. Industrialization will ruin tourism and the wine industry. People don't have to vacation here. We are within a five-hour drive of 30 million people, that many of whom like to vacation here, come, enjoy the lakes, buy our wine, and we employ many people because of this. Tourism and the wineries have grown exponentially over the last 30 years and will continue to grow if we protect and preserve it for ourselves and future generations. We not only have an economic duty to do the right thing, which is protect this land, these sustainable industries which are over time, over time dwarf this one-time gold rush. We also have a sacred duty to the land, our homes, and our children. These two industries cannot coexist. Choose. I know I have. What it takes to grow grapes is a delicate ecosystem. We have the tillable land and fresh water to become, once again, one of the food baskets of the country. This is especially so as the water supplies in the West disappear or diminish. Thank you. And Thank you, Ithaca. Thank you. Our next speaker is number 60, Elmer Irwing. Elmer Ewing, E-W-I-N-G. We hear repeated over and over, the decision on hydrofracking must be based on science, not emotion. After 45 years in research involving chemistry and biology, I think I recognize good science when I see it. I do not see it in the S. Geis. One example, theory becomes dogma if accepted without adequate testing. The dogma is many deep layers of rock 
separate the frac zone from aquifers, so it is impossible for fracking fluid or methane to migrate up that far. The supporting evidence is that, supposedly, no contamination has been proved to have occurred in 60 years of fracking. Not true. And even if it were accurate, not legally proved does not mean it never happened, especially when legal resources heavily favor the corporation and the potential litigants are pressured to sign non-disclosure agreements. Also, the history of high volume slick water, water, slick water fracking of horizontal wells is not 60 years, but less than 10 years. There are many potential avenues for migration, including vertical faults, abandoned wells, seismic events, and failures in the well casing and cementing. Sooner or later, concrete fails and steel corrodes. It is quite possible that migration via many of these avenues would be a slow process. It is still more likely that if contamination did occur, it would not be detected for a long time, and that when detected, fracking as the source would be difficult to prove in court. How long did it take to prove tobacco affects health? Also, how often has a researcher looked for aquifer contamination years after a fracking event? How long after the event and, is, and over how large an area would one look? What chemicals would be included in the search? Who would pay for the testing? Who would do it? Nevertheless, evidence of, mig of migration has already started to show up in peer-reviewed papers. Methane was more prevalent in water wells close to fracking. Methane found in water wells showed the geological fingerprint of methane developed deep down in the earth and not that of the gas developed in shallow layers. And an EPA study still underway in Wyoming indicates even stronger signs of migration into aquifers. Yes, based the S guys on science, but on objective science, science that brings to bear thorough testing of theory, not mere assumptions of safety, and include the whole range of science from medical to social to environmental science, especially in relation to cumulative impacts. And by the way, in the face of poor science, some emotion may be appropriate. Thank you. Our next speaker, number 61, is Carolyn Eberhardt. I'm Carolyn Eberhard, like the pencil, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N-E-B-E-R-H-A-R-D. I'm a biologist and a landowner in the town of Caroline, and I'm grateful to SeaCog for this forum. I'll get to G-E-I-S in a moment, but first I'd like to relate an incident that happened to me last spring. I was lunching with friends, chatting about the recent lobby day in Albany, and over comes a gentleman who joined our conversation. It turned out he was from Texas and left us with this assessment regarding Texas oil and gas men. If their lips are moving, they are lying. <laughs> now, with respect to the SGEIS, um, I have since learned that information uh, about the economic benefits of fracking fall into two levels. The first level is field economics, what actually occurs on the ground. The second is street economics, the hype that oil and gas gives out to keep their stock prices shored up and attract investors. I'm concerned that the S guy seems to be depending on street level economics and it needs to sort out, the DEC needs to sort out what is really happening in the field. They should consider the track record for the oldest shale play, the Barnett play in Texas, which is the most complete um, and, and track record and does not agree with the assumptions that are being used by the DEC. By the way, the Barnett is already in severe decline, according to the analysts. There are uh, a number of examples. I'll just, I'll just give them briefly. Uh, we've heard about the 100-year supply, which has been debunked. We've heard about that we will have much cheaper natural gas. That's the opposite of what would happen because when we have export to 
other countries with much higher prices, obviously the domestic price is going to go sky high, but by then we'll be dependent on natural gas if, if uh, Pickens plan goes into effect. Um, all parts of the, of the Marcellus are not equally productive, but the DEC assumes that it is. In Barnett, we were told that 17, okay, 17 um, counties were all equivalent, but in fact, only two and a half counties uh, had most of the concentration. Uh, same thing, the, the jobs are way overhyped. We have a lifetime of 30 to 40 years, which is overhyped. And the worst of all is that it will make us energy dependent. But in fact, the gas is already being planned to be exported as liquid natural gas and so on. The S guys um, should, is unacceptable because it's based on oil and gas generated projections and not based on independent analysis. Thank you. Thank you. And our next speaker is number 62, Dan Bergevin. And I could Hi, my uh, name is Dan Bergevin, B-U-R-G-E-V-I-N. Uh, I have not read the entire contents of the current draft of the S-Geist in regard to high volume slick water hydrofracting in the Marcellus Shale Formation. I do appreciate the time put into this document by the DEC, flawed science and all. I hope it will not be for naught and that we'll be, we will be spared from this craven, wanton act of hydrofracting my state. I went through Bradford County, PA on Route 6 and took, it took an hour and 45 minutes to get through the county seat to Wanda. One hour and 45 minutes to get through a town the size of Ithaca. I was appalled at the boom atmosphere. Thousands of trucks, truckers leering at women in their cars, the noise and pollution. I tried to imagine my town, Trumansburg, trying to cope with this. I counted 29 trucks at a single traffic light. It was monstrous. But what, I, what was in those trucks was even more frightening. Why? because I didn't really know. I don't see how anyone could ever really know the volume and toxicity of a full-scale play for shale natural gas. Men slouched over their steering wheels of their trucks for 12 hours a day, coming and going, dumping and spilling, endlessly driving. Like I said, monstrous. I talked to a local kid whose brother got one of those jobs they're talking about. He said they fracked 20 wells a day. 20 times 6 to 9 million gallons of water equals 100 to 160 million gallons of toxic fresh water a day, above and below the ground. In the end, it's billions of gallons of toxic fresh water. Where does it go? How can you recycle radionuclides, arsenic, heavy metals, stuff really toxic to kids, carcinogens and endocrine interrupters? But wait! We're protected, aren't we? Our children, grandchildren, my great-grandson Parker, our beautiful birds, wildlife, protected by the EPA, right? Environmental Protection Agency. Halliburton and the other big players in this hellish racket are exempt from seven major environmental laws. Clean water, clean air, clean freedom of information, Superfund Act, etc. So, waiting at our border to the south, seeping into our state like syphilis, are an army of lawless corporate bandits ready to privatize profits with their lackeys in New York State government, private, mostly big landowners, and socialize the mess left behind by the rape of our land and water. It is irresponsible, violent pillaging of our precious land and water and culture. Ours, a culture of stewardship and love for this unique and beautiful place. This sentiment is important to the oil. This. Thank you. 